Good morning, saints of God. Happy Tuesday to you. This is another day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. So glad to come before you once again with the word of encouragement. Uh, thank God for this word that the Lord dropped in my spirit for this week uh, and for this particular day, for this month of October, October the 4th, 2022. Uh, and my word of encouragement is joy. How important it is for the saints of God to demonstrate and to have joy you know god is so wonderful and so mighty and uh, such a blessing to us that uh, we should rejoice and we should have joy uh, and the people of the world should see the joy that we have uh, and we often say that this joy that i have the world didn't give it to me and the world cannot take it away i thank god for joy today i thank god for joy the joy of the lord is our strength the joy of the lord that's our strength and i'll get to that scripture a little bit later but i thank god for uh how he came in and blessed us on this past sunday at courageous faith church uh, god gave me a word while i was in a call meeting on saturday I had already prepared another sermon uh, but while i was there god dropped into my spirit uh, an encounter with god and how many of you have had an encounter with God actually know what it is to experience God in that way talked about Saul and him being on the road to Damascus and the encounter that he had with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and how his life was changed from that point forward and God used him greatly God used him greatly you know every day was not joyful every day was not uh, peachy king but uh, when God calls you and when God uses you and when God is with you then you can have joy because you know that he's not going to forsake you he's not going to leave you he's not going to abandon you he's on our side so I thank God for that I thank God for the scriptures from Psalm 118 24 I often quote that scripture this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. I'm going to be glad. I'm going to be thankful. I'm going to demonstrate how I feel to God, uh, not because of what he's doing in my life, but because of what he's already done and what he's doing right now and what he's going to do in the future. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Continually. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this opportunity to come before you once again. Bless the words that are spoken on today. Let them be used, God, for the upbuilding of your kingdom and the upbuilding of your saints. In Jesus' name, amen. Joy versus happiness. Joy is a feeling of great pleasure and, and happiness. Joy is an inward feeling that we have. Happiness is an outward expression of how we feel based on what's happening uh, with us, through us, and to us. So we can be happy about some circumstances or some situations, but the joy is something that's enter, it's down on the inside. Uh, we say the world uh, didn't give it to us and the world can't take it away, and that's a true statement. I want to go to Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 22 through 26. And it speaks about uh, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Nine seed inside of this fruit. Against such there is no law, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. You have joy based on what God is doing for you, and you can have joy. Uh, and you can be happy for other people 
as they're elevated, as they're promoted, as God does great things for them or for their ministry and their family. We can have joy uh, for them. We can have happiness for them based on what God is doing for them. It's not always just about us and what God is doing for me. And we have uh, a jealous spirit because God is seemingly blessing others more than what he's doing for us. We have to learn how to rejoice for other people. Rejoice. Now, if you truly have joy down on the inside, if you have the fruit of the Spirit, then you know that there are going to be some times when you're going to go through some things. You're going to have some situations. You're going to have some circumstances that may come your way. You may not always be pleasant. James Cleveland said, uh, nobody said that it was going to be easy, but he did not bring us this far. He has, he has been too good to us. He's done too much for us. He's brought us from such a long way. He didn't bring us here to leave us. He didn't bring us out here in the middle of this desert, in the middle of this wilderness uh, to leave us. Didn't bring us out of Egypt to abandon us. God has done so much for us and we can't allow uh, the enemy to get into our ear and start speaking doubt speaking confusion and speaking uh, strife uh, against uh, our brothers and our sisters in the Lord. We have to stay on point, stay focused on the things of God, what God is doing for you. You be thankful. What God has for you is for you. I want you to know that today. What God has for you, it is for you. And your season and your time will come. If you're faithful, if faithful over a few things, God will make you ruler over much. Be faithful. Stay connected to the power source. Have joy. Joy throughout. Let the, let the joy of the Lord rise up in you and give you the strength to go through, the strength to endure, the strength to say yes to his will and to his way. In James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4, my brethren, count it all joy, count it all joy when you fall into divers, various temptations, when you have situations that befall you, when it seems like the enemy is coming at you like a flood. He's saying, count it all joy. Tell the Lord, thank you. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The enemy meant it for evil. He meant it to take you out. He brought it upon you, or uh, God allowed it to come upon you, to test you to see where you were in your walk and your relationship with God. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. God can do it. God can do it. He's done it before. He can do it again. I thank God today. I thank God today. I'm not moved by circumstances. I'm not moved by situations. I'm not moved by people uh, pulling away and people acting a certain way. I'm not moved by those things. I am locked in to my relationship with God in this season and in this time that we're in right now. Time is too precious. The Lord is soon to return. And I know we've said that for years, but the Lord is soon to return. His return is much closer now than it has ever been. We have many things that are happening in the world today, things that we've never seen before, never anticipated happening. But we have to maintain our joy through it all. Through it all, we learn how to trust Jesus. We learn how to trust his word. We stand on the promises of God. The enemy may come in like a flood, but our Lord is there to lift up a standard in every incident, every situation that we face. My final scripture is from uh, Nehemiah, Nehemiah 8 and 10. We know the great work that Nehemiah had done uh, come to 
help his people to rebuild the wall that had been uh, had been devastated and torn down. So they were vulnerable uh, in their in their community. But God made a way. God gave him provision to to get to his his home state hometown. Uh, gave him the provisions to be able to get the materials necessary and gave him the leadership ability to be able to inspire the people to work. And it takes inspiration uh, when you are a leader. You have to be able to inspire people. People don't want to do things sometimes, but you can inspire them. They look at you and your leadership ability and you can inspire people to do what they don't even want to do. So I thank God for Nehemiah and his story, how he came and they rebuilt this wall in 52 days. But there were some things that had gone on and uh, once they realized how far they had fallen away uh, from God, how far they had fallen away from uh, the, 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 the laws that really had been established uh, in the book of Mo Moses had established for them in the books of the law, they had fallen far away. And once they felt that, then they had this uh, repentant heart and they were kind of down uh, because they knew that they had been wrong and God had been so good to them. And some of us sometimes, you know, when we think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us, how he brought us out, how he delivered us, how he made a way out of no way. You know, sometimes we, if we allow it, we can find ourselves, you know, kind of feeling a certain way. But God is saying to us, like he told them in Psalms 24, lift up your head, O ye gate. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gate, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord. He is the king of glory. So Nehemiah had to inspire them. He had to encourage them, just like I'm speaking to you today. He had to encourage them to let them know, yes, you may have fallen. Some of you may have fallen. Some of you may have slipped. Some of you may have, have, not, uh, have not lived up to the calling that God spoke to you and called you to. But it's not too late for God to bless. It's not too late for God to turn that thing around. God can do it today for you. I talked about having an encounter with the Lord on Sunday. And some of us need to have another encounter. We need to meet God again in a special place so that he can speak to us and give us what we need to move forward. So after he had encouraged them, he told them in verse 10, said unto them, go your way eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared, those that don't have. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorrowful, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord, something down on the inside is telling you to go ahead. Something on the inside uh, gives you the inspiration when you wanna quit Something just pushes you and tells you to go on a little bit further. Tells you that it's going to be all right. I thank God for joy today. Let the joy of the Lord dwell in you richly. Because in his presence, in the presence of the Lord, is fullness of joy. Thank God for you all. Thank God for listening in today. Let's be prayerful today. We're praying today on our Courageous Faith prayer lines, uh, 6.30, 9 a.m., 12 noon, and 3 p.m. We're praying. We're not just on the sidelines. We're not just taking time off. We're not relaxing because it seems like things are getting better. We're praying because we understand. We have a discerning spirit, and we can see what needs to be done. So let us do our part, saints of God. Let's pray. Let's stay on the wall and let's keep crying out for our family members, for our communities, and for this nation. God bless you. We'll see you next Tuesday if the Lord bless and says the same. And as always, remember, God loves you and I love you. 
and there's nothing you can do about it. Be blessed.